to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the working of your mercy, O Lord, we pray, direct our hearts or aright, for without your grace we cannot find favor in your sight. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to slaughter. I did not know it was against me. They devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Judge 
just and powerful and patient not exercising anger every day oh lord my god i take refuge in you oh lord my god i take refuge in you Kindly rise for the gospel acclamation. Blessed are those who hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord at that time when they heard the words of jesus some of the people said this really is the prophet others said this is the christ but some said is the christ to come from galilee has not the scripture said that the christ comes from the offspring of david and comes from bethlehem the village where david was so there was a division among the people over him some of them wanted to arrest him but no one laid hands on him the officers then came to the chief priests and the pharisees who said to them why did you not bring him the officers answered no one ever spoke like this man the pharisees answered them have you also been deceived have any of the authorities or the pharisees believed in him but this crowd that does not know the law is accursed nicodemus who had gone to him before and was one of them said to them does the law judge a man without first giving him a hearing and learning what he does they replied are you from galilee to search and see that no prophet arises from galilee they went each to his own house The gospel of the Lord Praise to you Lord Jesus Christ My dear brothers and sisters in Christ The gospel today is a bundle of confusions for us and certainly much more for those who were the interlocutors of today's discourses narrated by john A lot of confusion was there regarding jesus identity jesus had gone to the feast of the booths the shelters in jerusalem 
first some considered him like a prophet a prophet like moses which was foretold in the book of deuteronomy that god would send a prophet like him while others called him a false prophet because he worked miracles on the sabbath for some he was a, the anointed one the christ sent by god who is supposed to come from the davidic descent but for others he was a deceiver for some he was a man who spoke in such a way no one else spoke like him but for others he was not worthy of belief therefore they all went home meaning to say they did not believe in him they didn't bother they were indifferent many considered him as coming from galilee and certainly he was because he grew there but some at least knew that he had the davidic lineage because he was born in bethlehem and there were some unannounced believers like nicodemus who was a pharisee himself who was visiting jesus by night member of the sanhedrin and yet pharisees say look whether any one of the pharisees have believed and nicodemus must be just putting his head down keeping quiet or he gave a principle saying look does our law condemn any person without giving him a chance to defend himself and the pharisees who knew the law who knew the scriptures did condemn both jesus and the crowds saying these are accursed so people who think or thought that they knew the word of god buried their head into it yet it did not touch them they were outside of it these are quite a few of contradictions i just mentioned in a few words but if you can study the text you will find many more how did jesus consider himself what is his awareness about himself jesus knew that he was the beloved son of god sent by the father he was one with whom god was well pleased he relied on the father more than anything else the opinion of the people did not matter much for his ministry or for his own way of going about whatever people thought about him did not hinder him from doing what he was supposed to do for jesus the love of his father gave his true identity as the beloved son what is our core identity lent is a time or a season that reminds us that we are dust and unto dust we shall return but that is not all that is not our mere identity that we are dust but we also are aware that god is the potter who takes up that dust kneads it together well into a clay and shapes us and breathes his own breath into our nostrils and makes us living human beings yes we are in the hands of god like a gentle lamb that he leads us cares for us that we are also the beloved of god as jesus was today we have come many of our students have come to a particular stage of life perhaps they also have a question of their identity who am i from today a doctor a nurse or can i just say i am a doctor i am a nurse or i am a paramedic or i am someone who has done some course here therefore that defines me does your degree that you get today the certificate gives you true identity does your qualification or your possession will give you your true identity with a little reflection you will know that your identity does not depend on four or five years of study it is much beyond that it is much greater than your education our true identity is found 
in what our creator god says of us you are my beloved son my beloved daughter i am pleased with you while we have a tendency to focus on a part of us either intellectual capacities our education our certificates our achievements god invites us to try hard to focus on the grace that he gives us ultimately one thing alone matters and that is god loves us loves me on a day like this when our institution and our parents rejoice with the students with us all at having crossed the threshold to reach a particular stage in life we have to convince ourselves that our real identity does not come from our knowledge but through god's grace if today each one of us is able to say with conv- uh, conviction i am the beloved son of god i am the beloved daughter of god god loves me i am precious in his eyes i believe you can go ahead with all the possible energies in spite of all odds among all as i said in the beginning nicodemus in the gospel of pharisee himself stands out before us remembering that he had gone to jesus under cover of darkness perhaps not wanting any of the authorities to know to acknowledge jesus closeness to god and to ask how it is possible that someone could be born again his growth in faith and courage are shown by standing up for jesus in front of the other colleagues the pharisees the sanhedrin in today's reading and later he publicly helps the crucified jesus with anointing he brings 75 pounds of myrrh and aloe when all the disciples abandoned jesus they all ran nicodemus comes the one who was coming by night by now comes by the day to take the body of jesus and to anoint it ceremoniously with large amount of ointment we have to ask ourselves can i stand by jesus in today's world when jesus is insulted when christians are downgraded or when christians are opposed will i speak for jesus as nicodemus did as he went to pilate together with joseph or arimathea before the authorities before the common people how will my life be when i am with jesus whatever profession you take today remember that one person one who is hanging on the cross but he did not remain there he is with you through his resurrection every day and he walks with you and please walk with him let us now rise and place before our god our intentions and petitions let our response be Lord hear our prayer Lord hear our prayer God our father we pray for our holy father pope francis most reverend dr peter paul saldana our bishop priests and the religious that they may become the authentic messengers of your good news by their word and deed we pray Lord, Lord hear our prayer loving father We ask you to bless our director the priests of this institution the governing board managing committee and advisory committee members grant them the wisdom of making the right decisions at the right time for the growth of the institution we pray lord hear our prayer gracious father we pray for ourselves the graduates who will be graduating today bless us abundantly so that we may continue 
the healing ministry of your son Jesus Christ imbibe in us the spirit of father augustus muller so that we take care of the sick and the suffering especially the poor with empathy and dedicated service bless us so that we may respect preserve and promote life bless our parents guardians and teachers who molded our life we pray lord hear our prayer merciful father we ask you to bless the sick and the suffering with good health of mind and body touch the physically and mentally challenged grant them the grace to endure their sufferings bring them back to the joy of good health and peace of mind we pray lord hear our prayer loving father bless our doctors paramedics nurses staff and all the students enlightened by the spirit of the gospel and motivated by the spirit of our founder they may bear witness to your loving presence and uphold the motto heal and comfort in their service and study we pray lord hear our prayer merciful father we pray for ukraine and russia that they may give up their war and weapons inspire their political heads to come for the terms of peace grant eternal rest to those who lost their life in this war console all those who became victims of this terror we pray lord hear our prayer god our loving father we thank you for all the good gifts that you give us we thank you for all the students for passing through this institute and their parents their well wishers bless them all and bless all of us today present here and everyone who helps us in various walks of life and listen to our prayer lord those that are presented to you today and those that are in our hearts grant them through christ our lord amen this breath is my
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, with these oblations you receive from our hands, and even when our wills are defiant, constrain them mercifully to turn to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride and contribute to the feeding of the poor and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Peter Paul our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and I praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Very good morning Jesus. to everyone gathered here today. I request our esteemed guests to occupy their seats, as the graduation ceremony will commence shortly. Dr. Saritha Lobo and I, Dr. Jeffrey Lewis, would like to extend a warm welcome to the guests, invitees, parents, guardians of our graduates, staff and the students of the graduation ceremony of Father Muller Charitable Institutions 2022. This day is a much awaited one in every student's life. It gives our students an overwhelming sense of achievement, purpose and responsibility to fulfill their destiny, build a successful career and take their rightful place in society. Father Muller Charitable Institutions have been touching the lives of people of coastal Karnataka for 141 long years. This institution was founded by Reverend Father Augustus Muller in the year 1880 and now stands out as a hallmark of medical education and service in the country and is one of the few institutions to be accredited by several national bodies. With our motto, Heal and Comfort, Father Muller Charitable Institution runs 30 institutions related to health and education. Over 2,500 employees spread over four campuses. Today, Father Muller Hospital is a 1,250 bedded establishment with sophisticated precision equipment, state-of-the-art facilities, specialty and super-specialty services, along with highly experienced and dedicated staff, making it a world-class medical establishment. The Father Muller group of institutions provide an ideal and conducive ground for grooming young students into medical, paramedical and nursing graduates who learn the nuances of medicine. The training here goes beyond academics. It induces creativity and nurtures innate talent. Our students go out into society with a competitive spirit and become healers who work with love and compassion, faithful to our motto, to heal and comfort. Today, we will be felicitating 615 graduates from the Father Muller Medical College, Father Muller College of Allied Health Sciences, Father Muller College of Nursing, Father Muller College of Speech and Hearing and the Father Muller School of Nursing. The graduation ceremony 
began with a Eucharistic celebration and the solemn event will be presided over by Most Reverend Dr. Peter Paul Saldana, Bishop Manglo Diocese and the President of the Father Muller Charitable Institutions. Our chief guest today is Dr. Geetanjali Bhatmanabane, Pro Vice Chancellor, Geetam University of Medical Sciences, Vizac, and former director of Ames Bhuvaneshwar. Honorable Justice John Michael Dikona, former judge of the High Court of Karnataka, will be our guest of honor. We welcome sir and ma'am to this ceremony.
auditorium as it may disturb the solemn procession. The Father Muller Charitable Institutions Graduation 2022 Procession will be led by the institution's members. Representing Father Muller Charitable Institutions, Dr. Supriya Raghavendra Rao Aryo, Professor and Victory of Psychiatry, Father Muller Medical College. Father Muller College of Nursing, School of Nursing, led by Ms. Sherlyn Maria Chetri, Vice President, Nursing Student Council. Representing Father Muller College of Speech and Hearing, Mr. Ben Turutumel, third year, Bachelor in Audiology, Speech and Language Ecology. Father Muller College of Allied Health Sciences, led by Mr. Kristen Clive de Cruz, President of the Student Council. Representing Father Muller Medical College is the student flag bearer, Mr. Jordan Rade Raskina, President of the Student
Ladies and gentlemen, we now have a symbolic welcome in the traditional Indian custom, the Purna Kumbha Swamita and the Aarati performed by the students from the College of Nursing.
Applied Health Sciences and also the convener of the graduation committee to escort our dignitaries onto the days. We have amidst us most reverend Dr. Peter Paul Saldana, Bishop Manglo Diocese and the president of the Father Muller Charitable Institutions. We are honored to have Dr. Geetanjali Patmanabane, Pro Vice Chancellor, Geetam University of Medical Sciences, WISAC, and former director, Ames Bhuvaneshwar, as our chief guest. We are privileged to have Justice John Michael Dikuna, former judge, High Court of Karnataka, as our guest of honor. Reverend Father Richard Aloysius Coelho, director, Father Muller Charitable Institutions. Reverend Father Rudolf Ravi Desa, Administrator, Father Muller Medical College Hospital. Reverend Father Sylvester Vincent Lobo, Administrator, Father Muller Hospital, Tumbe. Dr. Anthony Sylvan D'Souza, Dean, Father Muller Medical College. Dr. Urban D'Souza, Dean, Father Muller College of Allied Health Sciences. Sister Jacinta D'Souza, Principal, Father Muller College of Nursing. Professor Akhilesh P.M., Principal, Father Muller College of Speech and Hearing. Sister Nancy Mathais, Principal, Father Muller School of Nursing. Dr. Ramesh Bhatt, Vice Dean, Father Muller Medical College. Dr. Uday Kumar, Medical Superintendent, Father Muller Medical College Hospital. Sister Janet, Chief Nursing Officer, Father Muller Medical College Hospital. We also have in our midst, Reverend Father Nelson Dheeraj Pais, Assistant Administrator, Father Muller Medical College Hospital and Reverend Father George Jeevan Sequera, Assistant Administrator, Father Muller Medical College Hospital. We welcome you all. Thank you, Reverend Father. I request our beloved Reverend Father Richard Aloysius Coelho, Director, Father Muller Charitable Institutions, to welcome the gathering, introduce the Chief Guest and the Guest of Honor, and to present a brief annual report of the Father Muller Charitable Institutions. Your, Your Excellency, Excellency Most, Most Reverend Dr. Dr. Peter Paul Saldana, Bishop of Mangalore Diocese and President of today's graduation ceremony, Honorable Dr. Geetanjali Patmanabhan, the Chief Guest of today's celebrations, Honorable Justice John Michael Dikuna, the Guest of Honor, Members of the Governing Board and Managing Committee, members of Father Mullah Centenary Charitable Society, administrators, deans, principals, all the priests in the management, distinguished guests, special invitees, government officials, sisters, graduates, postgraduates, well-wishers, media and press reporters, parents, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings of love and peace from Father Mullah Charitable Institutions, a hearty welcome and a pleasant morning to all of you. At the outset, let me express my deep gratitude to our Bishop, the President of this prestigious institutions, Most Reverend Dr. Peter Paul Saldana, who has honored us with his esteemed presence. In spite of his administrative and pastoral work, he keeps time for our institutional activities and events. Dear Bishop, we continue to look forward to your leadership, guidance, blessings, and with much delight and appreciation, I welcome you to this graduation ceremony. May I request Reverend Father Rudolf Ravidesa, Administrator of the Medical College Hospital, to offer a bouquet of flowers. It's my privilege for me to introduce our chief guest, a prominent and well-read personality, Professor Dr. Geetanjali Bhatmanabhan. Currently, Madam is the Pro Vice Chancellor of Medical Sciences at Geetam University, Vishakhapatnam. She was previously the Director of the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhuvaneshwar, and the mentor director of Ames Gauhati. She had also held an additional charge of Ames Patna and Ames Kalyani 
as director. She did her undergraduate and postgraduate training from the Jawaharlal Institute of Postgraduate Medical Education and Research, Jipmar, Pondicherry, and her PhD from the same university. Prior to joining Ames Bhuvaneshwar, she was senior professor and head of the pharmacology at Jipmar. For a brief span of two years, she worked as technical officer, essential medicines and other drugs at the World Health Organization, Southeast Asia Regional Office, New Delhi, and coordinated the Better Medicines for Children project in India. She was a member of the National Teacher Training Center core group at JIPMAR and the head of the Department of Medical Education at JIPMAR. She was a member of the WHO Expert Committee for Selection of Essential Medicines and continues to be a member of the World Health Organization's Expert Advisory Panel on Drug Evaluation. Drug evaluation. She was head of the WHO Collaborating Center for Research and Training in Essential Medicines and Rational Use of Medicines at JIPMAR and the convener of the MCI Regional for Faculty Development Programs. Her area of interest is essential medicines and rationale use of medicines and medical education. She has conducted many workshops on research methodology, scientific writing and biostatistics. She has innumerable publications in national and international journals and we are fortunate to have such a great personality as our chief guest today. Words are not enough and time is insufficient to speak of her achievements. With much difficulty, I have condensed this. Hence, with this brief introduction, I extend a cordial and hearty welcome to Professor Dr. Geetanjali to this August gathering. And I request <laughs> Sister Jacinta de Souza, the principal of our College of Nursing, to offer a bouquet of flowers as a tribute of being with us today. Audience, please give a big round of applause. It is really a great honor to have with us Justice John Michael Dikuna, the former judge of High Court of Karnataka as our guest of honor. Honorable Justice Michael is from Mangalore itself. He did his graduation from Calicut University and secured first rank in the year 1982. Further, he pursued his studies in law in the SDM Law College, Mangalore in the year 1985 and bagged second rank. The Honorable Justice has rich experience in the field of law and justice, which I have listed out as follows. Practice law, the civil side in Mangalore, from 1985 to 1998. Advocate High Court of Karnataka, 1998 to 2002. Was directly appointed as a director and sessions judge in May 2002. Served as the principal district and sessions judge at Darwad and Bellari, and then as principal judge, Family Court, Bangalore. Also served as registrar, vigilance, and registrar, general, High Court of Karnataka. Elevated as Judge of the High Court of Karnataka in November 2016. Demitted the office on attaining superannuation in April 2002-2021. Presently, he serves as the Honorable Arbitrator, Arbitration Center, Bangalore, and Resource Person, Karnataka Judicial Academy. A fond and hearty welcome to you, sir to this great grand ceremony. And I request the Dean of the Medical College, Dr. Anthony Silvan de Souza, to offer a bouquet of flowers as a token of our gratitude. It's a matter of joy to welcome my associates, all the priests in the management, who shoulder the yoke of responsibility of this mighty and remarkable institution 
along with me. I take this, take this occasion to appreciate the hard work put in by each one of them for the overall growth and progress of these institutions. Dear fathers, hearty welcome to all of you. Our governing board members have honored us with their presence here today. They always encourage and motivate us in the progress and development of these institutions and are the brains and wheels of this institution. Recognizing each one of them, I extend a hearty welcome, dear governing board members. We have the members of the managing committee, advisory committee members, the heads of the educational units, all our teaching faculty and supportive staff of the institutions. It's my pleasure to extend a hearty welcome to all of you. And here are the parents of our graduates. We are very proud to have you here today. You are our ambassadors because you have spread the fame of Father Mullahs across the globe through your awards. Thanks for gracing this occasion. A warm and hearty welcome to all of you, dear parents. <laughs> dear graduates, this day is about you and what you have achieved through hard work, determination, and moments of creative inspiration. Graduation is a time to aspire about your future and the world to come. When you think of the road ahead, you may gain perspective by looking back from where you have been. And I hope that when you do look back on your time at Father Mullahs, you will do so with affection and that you look ahead and that when you look ahead, you will regard Father Mullahs as an inspiration too. Hearty welcome to each one of you, dear graduates. I also take this opportunity to welcome all the guests, invitees, media and press personnel present here too. With these words of welcome, I am glad to place before you the annual report of our institutions and colleges in brief. The printed copy is in your hands. Keeping in mind the legacy of our founder, Reverend Father Augustus Muller, whose spirit still guides the destiny of our institutions, is the motto, Heal and Comfort. The noble mission and holistic healthcare services to the suffering humanity is carried on with same zeal and enthusiasm by Father Mullah family without any compromise. Father Mullah today is a brand name not only in our state and country but also across the globe. Father Mullah Medical College has 1,148 students studying in MBBS, MD, MS, BPT, MPT, PhD, and super speciality courses, namely DM and MCH. Results, MBBS all phases above 80%, PG degree and diploma 98%, BPT 85%, MPT 100%, and MCH urology 100% results, and PhD 100% results. Awards and recognitions. QS IUGH awarded with a diamond overall college rating, which is valid from 2021 to 2023, and platinum college rating in medicine subject valid from 2021 to 2023. NAC reassessment was held on 11 10 2021, and our college is re accredited with A grade valid till 2026. NMC granted increase of seats in MD Psychiatry from 6 to 9 and MD Anesthesiology from 8 to 9 seats. Pharmacology department is recognized as ADR Monitoring Center under Pharmacovigilance Program of India. Department and institution recognized as Medical Device Adverse Event Monitoring Center under Material Vigilance Program of India. New appointments. Dr. Anthony Silvan de Souza, Professor of Anatomy, was appointed as Dean of Father Mullah Medical College from 6 December 2021. New departments during the year 2021, Department of Emergency Medicine and Department of Immunohematology and Blood Transfusion were established. 
important events. Scholarships were distributed to the socio-economically weaker students on September 3rd, 2021. Most, Most of our, our faculties, faculties have, have attended, attended conferences, conferences, CMEs, webinars, and number of publications in national and international journals. Research. The Father Muller Research Center is actively pursuing staff and student research projects funded both from internal and external grants. Total ongoing research projects are 103, including 34 institutional grants and 27 external grants, 11 clinical trials, 14 UG students grants, 17 PG student grants. We have received WHO, ICMR, DST, Rajiv Gandhi University, and MERT grants worth more than rupees 2 crores 80 lakhs. In 2021, Two MOU were signed for research and academic collaborations. Total 13 MOUs are active for research and academic collaborations. Father Mullah Simulation and Skills Center completed six years in November 2021. The faculty conducts regular skill and simulation based educational sessions for our medical nurses, allied health science students, students as a part of their curriculum. Medical Education Unit has conducted workshop on essential of medical writing, CBME, timetable designing, education research workshop, and workshop on designing and delivering electives and many other programs. Alumni Association is functioning with great zeal and fervor. The former Dean, Dr. J.P. Alva, was felicitated on the day of installation of the new office bearers on December 4, 2021 by reunion and get together of all the alumni. I would like to place on record the dedicated services of Dr. J.P. Alva to Father Mullah, a personality who never compromised on academics, discipline and principles. Thank you, Dr. J.P. Alva. The NSS, Red Cross and Women Empowerment Cell Units of our college are very active and conduct programs on various occasions. College of Allied Health Sciences, currently the following UG and PG courses are conducted. BSc Medical Laboratory Technology, BSc Radiotherapy Technology, BSc Medical Imaging Technology, BSc Anesthesia Technology and Operation Theatre Technology, BSc Renal Dialysis Technology, Bachelor in Hospital Administration, BHA, MSc Medical Laboratory Technology, MSc Radiation Physics and Masters in Hospital Administration, MHA. New courses approval awaited, MSc Clinical Psychology and MSc Medical Imaging Technology. New courses applied for, awaiting for Rajiv Gandhi University inspections, BSc Respiratory Care Technology, BSc Cardiac Care Technology, BSc Emergency and Trauma Care Technology, BSc Neuro Care Technology. University results. More than 70% of the students passed the examinations and a few students secured distinction in the Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences examinations January 2022. We have secured 100% results in the final MSc MLT and MHA second semester with 100% results, RTT 94% and MIT third year uh, 98% ranks. A whooping of 88 ranks subject-wise were secured in MHA, while the UG total allied course brought home 54 ranks subject-wise. Installation of new dean, Dr. Urban J. De Souza, on December 6, 7, 2021, was appointed as the new dean of College of Allied Health Sciences. Father Mullah College of Nursing, Sister Jacinta De Souza is the principal. With a total of 500 students at present, BSc, PBBSc, and MSc, classes, the college has steadily marched forward since its inception in 1987 with excellent milestones. Academic achievements. Results of the final year university examination November-December 2021 of all courses is 100%. Out of 484 students, 428 students passed and 387 got a first class or distinction. Students won a whooping 166 subject-wise ranks and below 10 in the university. The NAC peer team visited the college in March 2021 for reaccreditation process. Faculty. Two of our professors were awarded PhD. 
from Nitte University and 11 faculty PhD scholars are pursuing under different universities. All important events such as course inauguration, lamp lighting and oath taking ceremony, workshops, seminars, guest lectures, awareness programs, radio and TV talks, release of Muller Spring and annual sports events and athletics were celebrated and conducted by the college. Research. At present, a total of 15 faculty projects, 13 PG projects and 25 UG projects are ongoing and 30 UG and 10 PG projects are completed. College also has MOUs with 10 research and academic collaborations. The Alumni Association is ex extremely active and is in its proud Silver Jubilee year. Fathamullah College, Speech and Hearing. Professor Akhilesh PM is the principal. Dr. Harji Singh Katwara is the head of HO audiology department. And Dr. Mahesh BVM is the head of speech language pathology department. Fathamullah College, a unit of Fathamullah Charitable Institution since its inception in 2007, successfully completed 15 years. The college provides four years graduate program in speech and hearing and two specialty postgraduate programs in audiology and speech language pathology course. The college is recognized by Rehabilitation Council of India and has a permanent affiliation to Mangalore University. The college provides good state-of-the-art infrastructure with qualified faculty in each specialties for the curriculum transaction. The college has conducted various programs, CMEs, workshops, webinars, and seminars during the academic year 2021-22. The college also conducts various awareness and hearing screening camps. World Hearing Day was celebrated with the theme, To Hear Well, Listen With Care. A faculty this year is awarded PhD, one faculty is awarded PhD, and a few other faculties have, faculty have registered as PhD scholars. School of Nursing. Established way back in 1959, the School of Nursing is the pioneer institution in nursing education in our state. The aim was to train young women as competent nurses to render service to the suffering humanity. The total intake is 60 students. Mrs. Jasmine Sarita was the former principal of School of Nursing, to whom we remain grateful for heading the school for 10 years till Sister Nancy Priya Matthias the present principal took over on 1st May 2021. To conclude, I quote Mark Twain, the two most important days in our life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. I hope today you graduates and graduates, you found out, you found out why the motto of the institutions, heal and comfort, has inspired hundreds and thousands of our students to care the sick and suffering. Fathamullah is, is a byword by for service. service. I am confident all the graduates who take the oath today are inspired by the spirit of our founder and will strive to be generous and committed in their noble profession. I hope all of you will carry on this legacy and are geared up to the sir to serve the society with compassion and care. Knowledge will give you power, character will give you respect. My good wishes to all the graduates and may God bless you. Once again, I accord a cordial welcome to each one of you and wish you all a pleasant day. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Father. Dear students, today is a milestone in your lives a reminder of how you have grown as a doctor and as a person. It signifies an ending, but also a beginning. It's a portal leading you through the warm memories of the past onwards to big dreams for your future. Today, we honor the graduates of Father Muller Medical College and charitable institutions and bestow upon them these prestigious degrees, hoping and wishing that they use their education as their most powerful tool as they leave their alma mater to venture out into the world. I request the audience to kindly refrain from leaving your seats and approaching the dais to take pictures of your wards, as it may hinder the smooth proceeding of this solemn occasion. An official photographer has been appointed to capture the profiles of each of your wards. Thank you. 
Live streaming of the ceremony will be available on Facebook and the institutional website www.fathermuller.edu.in. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall now commence the graduation ceremony where we honor our graduates and bestow the degrees they have secured through their hard work and perseverance. We begin the graduation ceremony with the School and College of Nursing. May I call upon Sister Nancy Priya Matthias, Principal, Father Muller School of Nursing, to present the diploma holders of General Nursing and Midwifery. I request the Chief Guest, Dr. Geetanjali, and our Guest of Honor, Honorable Justice John Michael Dikuna, to present the certificates to the Nursing Diploma holders. I am pleased to present to you the graduates of General Nursing and Midwifery courses. Evita Rovina Lobo, Nisha D'Souza. Renisha Josna Kutina Vinuta D'Souza Akshir D'Souza Anu James Ashna E. Benny Bessimol Baby Khalid Harvin Rodriguez Krishal Amrut Disuza Sharina Kashmir Delita Shanan Lobo Dinvira Castlino Divya Francis Divya Jyoti Grace John Grishal Vas Hiranya Husna Joswin Laila Krasta Joel Fernandez, Joyce D'Souza Lavita Korea, Mamata M.S. Mary Kinai, Melisha Daphne D'Souza Nestle Vullas Fernandez, Nishita D'Souza Prima Matthias, Preeti C Priya Feravo, Pushpa D'Souza Rashmita Sharal Pereira, Reshma R Rodriguez Flavi Lancy, Royden Glenn Colasso, Sarina Banu MR, Shannon Liston Pius, Shweta Shweta. Silvi Cecil Vegas, Sonia Sequera, Sonia KS, Steny Anna Stephen, Suraksha De Silva, Sweeney J. Lopez.
Valentina Rodriguez, Victoria Sony Fernandez. Vilma de Souza, Vincia Fernandez, Viola Thomas Fernandez, Eshishwini, thank you, thank you sister, thank you ma'am and sir, I now call upon Dr. Devina E. Rodriguez, Vice Principal, Father Muller College of Nursing, to present the graduates of B. Present the certificates to the graduates. With love and pride, I present before BSc, PBBSc, and MSc nursing graduates. Again, Elizabeth Aishwarya Lakshmi. Alina Mary Alina Sunny Alida Tom Alphonse Matthew Elvira Pais Amal Agnes George Amala Babu Ansila Pais Ansita Coelho Angel George Anila Teresa Kurian Anjali Miriam Saji Anita Joseph Anju Abraham and Maria Jojo Anvita Apurva S. Arthi Krishna PR Ashley Paul Brazila Joylin de Souza Candice Farias Carol Pinto Caroline Serao Cristina de Souza Christy Raju Clarissa de Souza Dauphin Roy Dikshita M Dina Clarin Dishma Vegas Delma de Souza Elizabeth Sebastian Flona Shelma Lobo Jia Raju Glenevia Crasta Jane Rodriguez Jelvita de Souza Jis Ajit Joylin Sikwera Joylin de Souza Lenisha Lobo Lisha Jane Maria Joy Manisha Reji
Maria C.S. Maria John. Mega Alosia Melanie. Minu Babu Monisha. Nega Devasi Nyola Saldana. Nikita Topo Nimisha K. Pearl Minajas Priyal De Silva. Priyanka R. Shraddha. Renisha R. Renita Mendonza. Reshma Roy Ria Saji. Rihanna Souza Rohan Lobo. Rosemary Joseph Ryan David. S. Grace Daniel Sandra Saji Sandra Maria Vaz Sandra Pinto Shefali Pinto Sona Francis Sonisha Fernandez Treya Thomas Sushmita Tanya Mascarenas. Tanya Biju Tina De Souza. Tina Person Twinkle Thomas. Vina Fernandez Vinita Beretto. Velsita Farao, I also present Anne Mary, Ashwita, Elsita, Melita Pereira, Jelmol Johnny, Marina Thomas, Nitu Maria, and Ranjana in their absence. Now present before you, PBBSC graduates Alfonsa AL, Alfonsa Kurian. Anju Thomas and Sister Anju Thomas. And Sir Joseph Christina Maria. Krishal Saravo D. Hania. Diksha Solom Dinsi Vergis. Femi Jacob Flavia Montero Glanita De Souza Grishma Davis Hani MC Janet Jose Jesli MK Jasmita De Souza Joby E.F. Josna Regi. Juliet N.J. Josna Melita. Kenya Mate Mamata J. 
नित्य क्रिस जोसेफ पवित्र Pavita Tellis Princey MD R Indira Reshma Jayan Rosmi Jo Sina Thomas Shanti Disouza Sharal Jos Shaini Mulwa Ki Shweta Simi Thomas Somin Simon Jacob Varsha TB Vinci Vargis Viola Pereira Viola Vina Pinto Viola Anisha Disouza I also present A Cousin Peripurana, Angel Sabu, Ashwin Marina, Betty George, Monica and Veronica in their absence. Now present before you, the MSc nursing graduates, Chinchu Tankachan, Josefina Tivo, El Mary Vinimol, Anita Joseph, Hani Gunjami Shrikant Zureka Priscilla Dicosta I also present Teresa Matthew and Vinita Sharil Pinto in their absence congratulations on your well deserved success thank you thank you madam thank you ma'am and sir I request Sister Jacinta de Souza, Principal, Father Muller College of Nursing, to administer the oath of a professional no nurse to the nursing graduates. I request all GNM and BSc graduates to rise, put forth your right hand, and repeat after me. I solemnly pledge myself before God and in the presence of this assembly to practice my profession I will zealously seek to care for those in need of race, creed, color, or social status. I will collaborate and coordinate with the health team and devote myself to the welfare of my patients my family, my family and my country. And my country. I, will I will endeavor to fulfill my rights, fulfill my rights and, privileges and privileges as a good citizen, a good citizen. And, take and take my share of responsibility to promote health, promote health. To, prevent to prevent illness, to restore health, to restore health. and to alleviate suffering. I will constantly endeavor to increase my knowledge and skills in nursing and to use them wisely. 
Lower your hands. Kindly place the tussle of your cap from left to right. Congratulations, dear graduates. Thank you, sister. Please take your seat. I call upon Professor Akilesh PM, Principal, Father Muller College of Speech and Hearing, to present the graduands and then administer the oath to them. I request the chief guest and our guest of honor to present the certificates. I am pleased to present the 30. De Silva Yorick, Grace Paul, Jelena Edwin, Katija Meher, Marley P. Saira Saju Srijan Shweta Usha Flora Matilda, Lavita De Souza, Ravina H. Salyan, Shaina Shoja, Aishwarya Soman, Anisha Emmanuel, Ashlyn T. John, Aisha Afda, Elizabeth Joseph Jefferson Vargis, Casey Elsa Vargis, Lisa Elizabeth George, Nihala Mahamud, Snigda Karikan, Tricia Astor, Vishnumaya TP. graduates to kindly rise for the oath. Extend your right arm forward and repeat the oath after me. I solemnly pledge myself before God on this day that I am committed to preserve the highest standard of integrity and ethical principles to the successful discharge 
of my responsibilities as a speech and hearing professional i do pledge that i will not indulge in any unlawful practices but consider the welfare of the people to whom the profession is of service and of paramount importance lower your arms kindly turn the tassel to the right congratulations thank you sirs and ma'am i now call upon dr urban disuza dean father muller college of allied health sciences to present the graduates of bsc medical laboratory technology bsc medical imaging technology and bsc radiotherapy courses and to administer the oath of an allied health science professional to them i request the chief guest and the guest of honor to present the certificates i am delighted to present the graduates of allied health sciences bachelor of medical laboratory akshata k anjana joy anushree anvita edna feroz anuel pinto avil alwa ayesha nishma doyle and disoza fatima misriya femona akshata lobo ग्रेसी फतिमा जनीषा प्रिंसी पिंटो कृष्णा नायर कुसुमायम मिशेल वैलेंटिना रोड्रिगस प्रज्ञा पीजे प्रीति जुलियाना पिरेरा प्रीति शा मरिया डिसोजा रक्षा पी रश्मिता जोशना रोजारियो सीमा डिसोजा सीजो जॉन Sinju AB Sona Saji Kuriyakos Sonia Delsita Mendonsa Spurti A Sushmita AP Swati R स्वीडल जेनिका सिक्वेरा तस्नीमा अब्दुल रहीमन एंड त्रुशांत बैचलर ऑफ मेडिकल इमेजिंग टेक्नोलॉजी आदर्श एस अनिश सी एस एंटनी वी एम बिजॉय पीटर Chetan PS Danny Yan Jijo Dominic Thomas Don Benny Jacob Saji Jennifer De Costa Jamal PJ Joyston Franklin Miranda Kevin Philip Linda Teresa Tom Lionel Saldana Mega K 
ಮಿಶೆಲ್ ಕುರಿಯಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥ್ಯೂ ನಮ್ರಥ ನವ್ಯ ಕೆ ಎಸ್ ನಿಖಿಲ್ ಕೆ ಮ್ಯಾಥ್ಯೂ ನಿಮ್ಮಿ ಜೋಶ್ ಸ್ಯಾಮ್ ಜಾಯ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥ್ಯೂ ಟಾಮ್ ಜಾಯ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥ್ಯೂ ವೆನಿಸಾ ಪಾಯ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಚುಲರ್ ಆಫ್ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಥೆರಪಿ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಅನ್ಸಿಲ್ಲ ಪರ್ಪೆಚುವಲ್ ಡಿ ರೊಜಾರಿಯೋ ಲ್ಯಾನ್ವೆಲ್ ಜೋವಿಯನ್ ಸಿಕ್ವೇರಾ ಮಹಿಮಾ ರೈ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಲಿನ್ ಜಾರ್ಜ್ ಲೂಯಿಸ್ ಮೇಘನ ಶಿವಲಿಕಾ ಆರ್ ಸಾಲಿಯನ್ ಆಂಡ್ ಸಿಬಿನ್ ಬೆನ್ನಿ dear graduates of allied health sciences please rise extend your right arm and repeat after me i solemnly pledge myself before god to practice my profession with dedication and professional competence i will consider the welfare of my patient and respect all life human dignity and rights in the practice of my profession i promise to abide by the laws governing my profession follow safe work practices and ensure patient safety at all times lower your arm tassel of your cap from left to right congratulations and all the best for a bright future thank you thank you sirs and ma'am I call upon Professor Cherishma De Silva, Head and Course Coordinator, Physiotherapy to present the Bachelor of Physiotherapy graduates and to administer the oath of a physiotherapist. I request our chief guest and guest of honor to present the certificates. Ms Brianna Mayola Tauro Ms Denzita De Souza Ms Disha Jogi Ms Donna Christie Joy Ms Drishya Dinesh MP Ms Edwina De Souza, Ms Fabina Rachel Matthew.
Ms. Gadling Shweta Sanjay, Mr. Godwin Matthews. Mr. Gregory Paul Ribeiro Sa, Ms. Janicia Vaz. Ms. Janita Santmayor, Ms. Jennifer De Souza. Ms. Giselle Tauro, Ms. Joseph Annie Peter. Ms. K. Jonica Johnny, Ms. Keandra Claire Fernandez. Ms. Lakshmi, Ms. Lolita Glenn Slobo. Ms. Martis Vanessa Vincent, Ms. Nanonshka Mascarenas. Mr. Melroy Wilson Montero, Mr. Nikhil Sevi. Ms. Rajita KP, Ms. Saida Gauzia Makandar. Ms. Charlotte Shahjan, Ms. Sheikh Asifa Praveen. Sister Sneha Usuf, Ms. Snehal Malisha De Souza. Mr. Tony Tommy, Mr. Waz Jocelyn Praveen. graduates to kindly rise and extend your right arm forward and repeat after me the oath of a physiotherapist. I shall in thought, word and deed be ever honest in the discharge of my duties and uphold the dignity and integrity of my profession and honor and name of, of my, my university, university and my alma mater. I pledge to uphold and advance social order and the well-being of my fellow members and shall devote all my energy to promote the unity, integrity, and secular ideal of my country. I swear to sincerely endeavor to serve the afflicted, sick and ailing patients under my care and all those who need my services to the best of my ability, without any consideration of caste, creed, or status. Lower your hands. As a mark of your achievement, now turn your tassel from left to right. Warmest congratulations on your graduation. Please take your seat. Thank you, ma'am and sirs. I invite Dr. Anthony Sylvan D'Souza, Dean, Father Muller Medical College, to present the names of the graduates of MBBS and also to administer the oath of a physician to the graduates. I request the chief guest and the guest of honor to present the certificates. <coughs> MBBS. Graduates, Dr. Aaron 
ಜೋವಿನ್ ಮತ್ತಾಯಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ್ ಕುರಿಯ ಕೋಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಏಬು ಜಾಕ್ ಜೇಕಬ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆದೀಪ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಂಟ್ಲಿನ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯೋನ ಮೋರಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಐಶ್ವರ್ಯ ಆನಂದ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಐಶ್ವರ್ಯ ರಾಯ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಕ್ಷರ ಕ್ಲಾರ ಬಿಜು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಮಲ್ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಚಾಕೋ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಮೀನಾ ಮುಕ್ತಾರ್ ಅಹಮದ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆನೆಟ್ ಡೇಮಿಯನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಏಂಜಲ್ ಮೇರಿ ಆಂಟನಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಏಂಜಲಾ ಮೇರಿಯನ್ ಥಾಮಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅನಗ ಮೇರಿ ಟಾಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅನೀಶ್ ಆಂಟನಿ ಡಿಸಿಲ್ವ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅನಿಟಾ ಮಾರ್ಟಿನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಜಿತಾ ವರ್ಗೀಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಜು ಬಾಬು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜೆ ಆನ್ ಗ್ರೆಗರಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆನಾ ರೋಸ್ ಜಾಯ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆನಿ ಪ್ರೇಸ ಜಾರ್ಜ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಂಟನೆಟ್ ಜೇವಿಯರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಪರ್ಣ ಜೋಸೆಫ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅರ್ಪಿತಾ ಜೋಸೆಫಿನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಶ್ವಿತಾ ಎವಲಿನ್ ಡೇಸಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಸ್ಮಿತಾ ರೆಡ್ಡಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಬಸವರಾಜ್ ಪೂಜಾರಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಬೆಜಲೆಲ್ ಬಿನಾಯ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಬಾಬಿ ಥಾಮಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಬ್ಯೂಸಿ ಪ್ರಣತಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಥರಿನ್ ಜೂಲಿಯಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಚಂದ್ರಗಿರಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ್ ಕೆ ಎಂ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕ್ರಿಸ್ಟೀನಾ ಲೋಬೋ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕ್ರಿಸ್ಟಿನ್ ಮರಿಯಾ ಡೃತಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಡೆಬಿಟ್ ಸಜೀವ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಡೆನಿಕಾ ಬೆನಿಲಿಸಿಲಾ ಡಿಸಿಲ್ವ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಡೇನಿಯಲ್ ಕುರುವಿಲ್ಲಾ ಥಾಮಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಡ್ಯಾನ್ಸನ್ ಹೆರಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸಲ್ಡಾನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಡ್ಯಾರಿಲ್ ಜಾರ್ಜ್ ಸ್ಟೇಸಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ದರ್ಶನ್ ಎಂ ಎನ್ ಪದ್ಮಶಾಲಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಡಿಯೋ ಗ್ಲಾಡಿಸ್ ಪೊತ್ತರಾಜು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ದಿವ್ಯ ಬಾಬು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ದಿವ್ಯ ಮೆಡೋನ ಡಿಸೋಜ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಡ್ಯೂನಮಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟುತಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಬಿನ್ ಜಾನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಐಲಿನ್ ಜಾಯ್ ರಾಯ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಗೌರಂಗ್ ಕಮಲಾಪುರಕರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಾರ್ಜ್ ಎಂ ಜೇಕಬ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಗ್ರೇಸಿಯಸ್ ಅನಿಶಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಭೀಷ್ಮ ಗೋಪಕುಮಾರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜೇಕ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥ್ಯೂಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜೆನಿಸ್ ಮಾರ್ಗರೆಟ್ ಅಮನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಸ್ನ ಜಾರ್ಜ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜೋಯಲ್ ಜಾಯ್ಸನ್ ಡಿಸೋಜ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜೋಯಲ್ ಸಾಬು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜೋಶುವಾ ಎಸ್ ಚಾಕೋ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜೋವಿನ್ ಜೇಮ್ಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಾಯ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಸಾ ಕೋಶಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಾಯ್ಸ್ ಶರಲ್ ಡಿಸೋಜ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೆ ಎಂ ಜುಬಿನ್ ಕನಿಷ್ಕನು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕನಿಷ್ಕ ಕಕ್ಕಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕಾರ್ತಿಕ್ ಎಸ್ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೆವಿನ್ ದೇವಸಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೃಪಾ ಬ್ರಿಜೆಟ್ ದೇಸಾ 
ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಲಸ್ರಾಡೋ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮರೀನ ರೊನಾಲ್ಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಲಿಪ್ನಸ್ ಬಿ ವರ್ಗೀಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಂಜಲೀನಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಂ ಜೋಶ್ವಾ ಆಶಿಶ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮಾಯೂರಿ ಜಿ ಭಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮಿಕೈಲ್ ಸಾಬು ಜಾರ್ಜ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮೆನನ್ ಮಲೈಕಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮೆರಿನ್ ಮೇರಿಯಂ ಜೋಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮೆರಿಟಾ ಎ ಜೇಕಬ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮೆರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಲೆಕ್ಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮೊಹಮ್ಮದ್ ಆಸಿಮ್ ರಶೀದ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮೊಹಮ್ಮದ್ ನಿಫ್ಸನ್ ಯೂಸುಫ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನವೀನ್ ಕಟರಾಕಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನೇಹ ಜಾಯ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನೇಹ ರಾಬಿ ವಗೀಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನೆಸ್ಸ ಡಿಸಿಲ್ವಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಿಧಿ ಮನೋಜ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಿಖಿಲ್ ಆರ್ ಪಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಿಕೋಲ್ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ಟಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಿಮಿಷ ಮೋಲ್ ಸನಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಇವ್ಯಾಂಜಲೀನ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಲ್ಲಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪಲ್ಲವಿ ಕೆ ಪಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪಲ್ಲವಿ ಉದಯ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪ್ರಗತಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪ್ರೀತಮ್ ಬೇಸಿಲ್ ಮಾರ್ಟಿಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ರಿಯಾ ಪಿಂಟೋ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪ್ರಿಯಾಂಕಾ ಪಾಲ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜೆನಿಶಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರೆಹಮನ್ ನಸೀರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರೈನರ್ ಜಾಯ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಾಮ್ ಮೋಹನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಮ್ಯಾ ರಾಮಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರವೀಂದ್ರ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರೀತು ವಿನ್ಸಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರೆನೆ ಥಾಮಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರೆನೋ ಥಾಮಸ್ ಜೇಕಬ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಿಯಾ ಜೋಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರೀಮಾ ಮರಿಯಂ ಜೇಕಬ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಿದಿಕಾ ಶಾಜು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಿನಿಟಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜಾನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಿಯಾ ಜಾಯ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರೋಹನ್ ಕೆ ಜೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರೋಹಿತ್ ಜಾನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರೋಹಿತ್ ಎಂ ಆರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರೋಜ ಜಾರ್ಜ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರೋಷನ್ ಟೋನಿ ಮೆವಾಡ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರುಬಿನಾ ಸೂಸನ್ ಜಾರ್ಜ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಸ್ ರತ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಂದೇಶ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಂಜಯ್ ಆರ್ ಶೆಟ್ಟಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಪ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಾತ್ವಿಕ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶರತ್ ದೇವಿದಾಸ್ ಭಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶೀನಾ ಆಕ್ಮೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶಿವಾನಿ ಉಪ್ಪುಲೂರಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾ ಎಸ್ ಭಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ಆಳ್ವ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೇಯ ಪಾಂಡ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರುತಿ ವಿಕ್ರಮ್ ಟೇ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿದ್ಧಾರ್ಥ ಕೃಷ್ಣನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಂಧು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸ್ನೇಹ ಸಿಲ್ವಿಯಾ ಚಟ್ರಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸೋನೋ ಟ್ರೇಸ ಆಂಟನಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸ್ಟೀವ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ಜಕಾರಿಯಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸ್ಟೀವ್ ಆಲಿವರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸುಧನ್ ರಾಕಿಮುತ್ತು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸುಹಾಸ್ ಎಚ್ ಎಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸುನಂದ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸುಶ್ರುತ್ ಶೆಟ್ಟಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ತನಿಷಾ ಜೇಮ್ಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ತನಿಷಾ ಲಿಯೋನ್ ಚಾರ್ಲ್ಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ತಾನ್ಯಾ ಲಶ್ಕರ ಮೋಹನ್ ರಾಜ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ತಾಶಾ ಪೌಲ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಚೇಜಸ್ ಬೇಕಾಲ್ ಬೇಕಲ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಥಾಮಸ್ ಸಾಬು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಟೀನು ಮರಿಯ ಜಾಯ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವರುಣ್ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಜಿ ಡಿ 
ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವೀಕ್ಷಿತ್ ಶೆಟ್ಟಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವಿಜಯ ಮರಿಯ ಕೊಲ್ಲಾಸು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ವಿ ಎನ್ ಮಾರ್ಗರೆಟ್ ಡಿಸೋಜ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಉತ್ಸವ್ ಕಾರ್ಯ ಎಂ ಬಿ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಜ್ಯುಯೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರೈಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಲಿ ಪುಟ್ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಯುವರ್ ರೈಟ್ ಅಪ್ಪಲ್ ಇಮ್ ರಿಪೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಮೀ ಐ my life to the service of humanity even under threat use my medical knowledge contrary to the laws of humanity i will maintain the utmost respect for human life from the time of conception I, I, will will I will not permit, permit considerations, considerations of religion, religion nationality race party politics or social standing, or social standing to, to intervene, intervene between, between my duty and, and my, my patient I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity the health of my patient will be my first consideration i will respect the secrets which are confided in me i will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due i will maintain by all means in my power the the honor and noble traditions of medical profession i will treat my colleagues with all respect and dignity i shall abide by the code of medical ethics as enunciated by the national medical commission i make these promises solemnly freely and upon my honor kindly lower your upper limbs you may turn the tassel to the right now congratulations and all, all the, the very best, best. thank thank, thank you, you sir sirs and ma'am dr sweeta dikuna professor and course coordinator mha will present the post graduates of msc medical laboratory technology masters in hospital administration and masters in physiotherapy courses 
I request the chief guest and the guest of honor to present the certificates. I'm pleased to present the post graduates of Allied Health Sciences. Uh, Medical Laboratory stu uh, Technology students, Mr. Adarsh Beni and Amalu Xavier. Miss Anju George, Miss Anju M. Miss Chaitana Ullas, Miss Chippy James. Ms. Jeshma Krasta, Ms. Jobimol P.T. Ms. Leah Maria Sisterlini T.L. Masters in Hospital Administration, Ms. Chinju George, Ms. Diana Fernandez. Father Gio Gletus, Ms. Jovita Arana. Ms. Lovina Daniel Adina, Ms. Navya Shri AB. Ms. Pooja Ravi, Ms. Prashna Rai. Ms. Priyanka Neeta Montero, Ms. Sahana Vegas. Ms. Sarita Reshma, Ms. Seema U.S. Mr. Jason D. Almeida. The Masters in Physiotherapy, Ms. Alfonsa Raju, Ms. Ansi Sharon Gifta. Sister Perpet, congratulations, dear postgraduates. Thank you, ma'am and sir. Dr. Ramesh Butt M, Vice Dean, Father Mulla Medical College, College will, will present, present the postgraduates of MDMS. Diploma, Super Speciality and PhD courses. I request the Chief Guest and Guest of Honor to present the certificates. Good morning. We have the privilege of presenting flowers blossomed in our garden, postgraduate, graduates and PhD awardee. Dr. Anand Kumar, and Dr. Durga Satish. Dr. Anthony Jos. Dr. Anusha Yam. Dr. Benedict M. R. Pius. Dr. Delma Dikuna. Dr. Meghana Srinivas, Dr. Don Jack Cherian, Dr. Roshan Christopher Ross, Dr. Shibu Shahi, Dr. Shruti Ashok Pai, Dr. Arshi Kaul. Dr. Venkateshwaran Yam, Dr. Pankuri Monga, Dr. Vipin Paul, Dr. Priyanka Renita Disoza, Dr. Vishnumurti, Dr. Santosh Madhukar Nambiyar.
डॉक्टर जेसन एंड्राडे एंड डॉक्टर कैरल जैकब डॉक्टर केविन आल्फ्रेड सैमुअल डॉक्टर शहिस्ता नास डॉक्टर मकम अमृतवल्ली डॉक्टर सुप्रिया समक एस डॉक्टर नयन जॉन पिंटो डॉक्टर अनुषा महालावात डॉक्टर राहुल पी नंबियार डॉक्टर कीर्तन छात्रा डॉक्टर सुप्रजा सुब्रमण्यन डॉक्टर विश्वास जी अमीन डॉक्टर विष्णु पी एस डॉक्टर लेनिशा जोलिता सेक्वेरा डॉक्टर अनिता के आर डॉक्टर पॉल साइमन डॉक्टर दिया माथेन डॉक्टर टोनी जेकब डॉक्टर फरजाना मुस्ताफा डॉक्टर अडवाला सूर्य तेजा डॉक्टर जोयेना जोत्सना डॉक्टर अलीशा मैथ्यू डॉक्टर जीवन लैसरेडो डॉक्टर अर्चना डॉक्टर पूजा वाली डॉक्टर अतिरा केपी डॉक्टर संजय एचआर डॉक्टर मलविना डिकुन्ना डॉक्टर ए मधुकुमार डॉक्टर चिरंजीवी एस गौड़ा डॉक्टर विनीता अगस्टिन डॉक्टर जॉर्ज जोसेफ डॉक्टर पूर्णी भारती टी डॉक्टर भव्या भास्कर शेट्टी डॉक्टर मंजुनाथा आर डॉक्टर नैनेट ट्रिनेटा स्वेरेस डॉक्टर संस्कृति जाकी रेड्डी डॉक्टर क्वाड्रोस रेशमा रोनाल्ड डॉक्टर मधु आर डॉक्टर सेरा साजी मोसेस डॉक्टर जोम एंड प्यूगी कॉलनी Congratulations and wishing you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you sirs and ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us 615 graduates and their unforgettable moment in the limelight. Join us in congratulating the fresh graduates by giving them a hearty round of applause and to their proud parents as well. as a mark of loyalty and reverence for the nurturing qualities the institution has imbued in the graduates thus far which in turn has made this special day possible i request everyone to rise in respect for the institutional anthem
Please be seated. I now invite our distinguished chief guest, Dr. Geetanjali, to deliver the graduation address. The President of the Father Muller Charitable Institutions, the Most Reverend Dr. Peter Paul Saldana, Honorable Justice John Michael Dikuna, the Director Father Richard Coelho, dignitaries and administrators on and off the desk, faculty, parents, well-wishers, the media, and of course, the stars of this morning, the graduating students. Good morning. It's, I thank the director of Father Muller Charitable Institutions for inviting me to share this important event, the graduation day 2022 of the FMCI institutions, a celebration of your success with me. I am honored, privileged, and a little bit overwhelmed by the spontaneous outpouring of respect and affection bestowed on me by this prestigious institution. Sharing the st stage with these articulate, erudite, and scholarly people I have been blessed to meet in Mangalore is a pretty daunting task by itself. But being called to give the chief guest speech on this prestigious event occasion is sufficient to give anyone the jitters, but I am surely going to give it my best shot. First of all, I congrat congratulate all the graduates, postgraduates, the prize winners, award winners, on their wonderful accomplishment. All of you joined this institution. All of you joined this institution with a goal. And today, you reap the harvest of your hard work, patience, perseverance, and determination. There is no better feeling in the world of accomplishment that beats holding your degree in your hands. Believe me, savor this moment. It is your moment, your day. Carpe diem, seize the day. My mind goes back to more than four decades ago when the, this excitement and feeling I had when I held my, grad, my uh, degree in my hands and even when I received my PhD many, many years later. As a teacher, I share the pride of each of your teachers must be feeling today as they see you people proudly going to collect your degrees. I have been sitting in the same places as your faculty sometime back and there can be no greater moment of fulfillment for a teacher than to see their uh, students go forth into the world. I also remember sitting in the audience as a parent as I watched with pride my daughter going and receiving a degree. And now I have the privilege of being here on this stage, handing some of you your awards and the degrees myself. As I have gone through this many facets in life, I can tell you that the feeling, the excitement, the anticipation remains the same. It is a beautiful day and I appreciate and applaud all the faculty for the um, many wonderful ways in which you have imparted the education and tried to make a difference in the lives of your students. So what does it mean to be an educated person in today's world? 
Some of the students graduating here may be the first generation of degree holders in the family. I am the first woman in my family to even have an, a university education. Many of the ladies in my family did not even have the luxury of completing school. But that was, and I believe, a different time. What we should be worried about as adults here, today, sitting here, is that even today, in our country, as well as in many places around the world, there are many people who are denied an education for various reasons. This is something we need to reflect on as we celebrate this beautiful day together. To me, being educated has set me free to explore the limits of my ambitions, my capabilities and abilities. It has permitted me to give back in small measure to society. It has allowed me to motivate and urge young people and at times not so young people also to do better, to walk longer and strive harder. Above all, it has made me humble and taught me to respect people with differences for their differences. Education has given me a chance to be a public servant with all the enormous responsibilities, the duties, the obligations and the compulsions it evokes. Above all, it allows me to contribute to nation building, which is the highest privilege for a person. Such a wonderful opportunity I have got only because I had the privilege of getting an education. So what advice can I give you all today? Maybe a few pointers to nudge you on your way. Number one, Maya Angelou said, when you learn, teach. When you get, give. Education is like a deep well. The more you teach, the more you will learn. This is given a fancy name in education called peer teaching. This has been going on for centuries in our country. We, in a traditional gurukul, it's only the senior students who teach the newcomers, never the guru. This is because teaching improves learning. So when you learn, teach. Number two, a degree is no substitute for skill development. Many companies have to train their graduates it hires to teach them the skills they should have learned in college. This is a sorry reflection of our education system, but we don't have the luxury of that. When we recruit nurses or technicians or doctors or super specialists, we expect them to start performing the skills they have learned in college from the very first day. So train for it, practice it. You have to be prepared for it. When I joined Ames Bhuvaneshwar as an administrator, I had very little administrative experience. So I listened to lectures, I read a whole lot of books, I, on YouTube, I spoke with senior people and I learned the skills on the run. And unless you know these skills, someone else will beat you to it. I am especially concerned about the inability of many of our graduates to communicate effectively with others, whether it is their peers, sometimes even family members, teachers, and in our situation as healthcare providers with patients and their relatives. Unless we train ourselves to speak and write well, listen well, we will not be in a position either to make ourselves understood or to solve problems of others. Unfortunately, the technical advancement and the environment prevents people from developing these very fundamental skills. So learn to speak well, write well and listen well. Number three, help one another, help someone, anyone. Be a rainbow in someone else's cloud. This generation is becoming more and more self-centered, demanding, impatient, and with a misplaced sense of entitlement. The need for instant gratification, it may be likes in uh, Facebook or WhatsApp or Instagram or whatever it is. There is an increasing dip in, uh, dependency on technology. This has led to isolation, failure to establish meaningful relationships, increase in self-harm, depression, suicide, and so much more. The way out of this, as I see it, is to help someone in any way you can. Teach someone to sing, dance, make uh, dosa. Yesterday I had this near dosa, fantastic. So teach someone anything. Remember that you try to help people without expecting anything in return. It is empowering and liberating. 
When I was a little girl, uh, I had joined the Girl Guides Association about half a century ago and we had to do a task every day. We had to help someone and write it down. The idea is it should become a part of yourself. So that's the idea. Do something good every single day. Number four, be grateful for what you have. As I said, education which you have is a gift. You will not appreciate it unless you lose it or someone prevents you from getting it. It pains me to see young people who are not attending classes, who are going on strike for trivial reasons and don't make use of the opportunities which have been given to you. In fact, Srinivasa Ramanujan, one of the best mathematical minds our country produced, could not even afford paper and pens. He did all maths on a slate and he had to erase what was written with his elbow. When we were young, pencils and erasers were scarce commodities. We could not afford to lose them. Unfortunately, with the increase in affluence and affordability, we see also an increase in waste and a lack of accountability for our resources, whether it is water, food, electricity, clothes, anything. A continuing need for more and more, better and bigger, had le has led us to a situation where nothing pleases anyone anymore. And so we need to understand, to be grateful for what we have. It doesn't matter that if you have a fantastic classroom with state-of-the-art uh, Wi-Fi system, teaching learning resources, that automatically education becomes better. No, it comes from within. So there is a freshness in the air as we see many young IAS officers doctors, engineers, accountants, who are realizing that there is satisfaction in giving back to society. We hear of success stories, but these are unsung stories which we need to sing. This freedom we have in our country, the education you have got, the food on your plate, the clothes on your body, be grateful. There are many who don't have it and will never have in the future. Number five. Take care of yourself. Look after your health. Eat wisely in moderation. Run, walk, dance, work out, meditate, pray. Take time out to take care of your body and mind. You will need them for a lifetime. And lastly, embrace change. Change is the one certainty you will have in life. If we do not prepare ourselves for change, we will lose out in life. Great things never come from within your comfort zone. Challenge the status quo. Challenge your friend's status quo. Do difficult things. Work to leave this place slightly better than when you found it. You have a wonderful motto in your institution. Fulfill it. So that's it. I'm done. In the end, it is you people, all you people who are sitting here, who can take on the challenges faced by our generation. We are privileged because of our education to be in a position to help the poor, the starving, the sick, the marginalized, the infirm, the elderly. That's the wonderful thing about being in the healthcare professions. Mark Twain said that kindness is a language that even the deaf can hear and the blind can see. So be kind to all. You will be blessed in many ways you can never imagine. God bless, God bless you and have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, madam, for your precious inputs to our dear students. Your presence here is an inspiration to all of us. On behalf of the graduates, Dr. Sindhu M. shall deliver the response to the graduation address as an expression of the graduate's sentiments and gratitude. Dr. Sindhu has also been provisionally selected to receive the RGHS award for securing the highest marks in pharmacology in MBBS. Respected President of today's occasion, Chief Guest, Guest of Honor, Dignitaries on the days, of the days, and everyone gathered here, a very good morning to one and all. It is an honor and privilege to voice out my thoughts on behalf of all the graduates of Father Muller Institutions. It is a well-known fact that the medical course is not an easy one and poses its own challenges and hardships. And I can say with conviction 
that this institution has eased out every one of those challenges and helped in going through it very smoothly. I have no hesitation to acknowledge the fact that this institution has provided a comprehensive and all-round medical education to all of us. Five and a half years of medical education has indeed been a wonderful journey and I can only say that it has passed too quickly. It seems just yesterday that we entered the institution enthusiastic and wondering what five and a half years will have in store for us. We never imagined this day would finally come and it is indeed a wonderful feeling to stand before you all and share a few thoughts. I thank the good administration of the institution for making us feel at home always, for creating in us a sense of belongingness whenever we were in the campus. During the last five years, we have received quality medical education, practical training, good mentoring, and also wholesome personality development. Our teachers and mentors have gone out of the way to help us in understanding the subjects and have guided us very well. The good study environment and work atmosphere have all helped in medical education. The practical training and clinics have given us enormous confidence in facing the real challenge of the medical profession. This is mainly because of the good and diverse clinical load provided in the hospital. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all our teachers and seniors from the first years of our studies for helping us build a good base to final year for never having hesitated to help and guide. I would also like to thank all the clerical and support staff who have also taught us a lot. I would also like to thank all my fellow colleagues and batchmates who have provided me valuable guidance, support and help from time to time. These memories will be something that we will always cherish and remember. I'm sure this institution will scale newer heights with the dedicated staff, director and administrators in the helm of affairs. I wish all the students the very best in their future personal and professional life. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sindhu, for reminiscing about your years spent in this institution and for expressing your gratitude towards your alma mater. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to honor the meritorious graduates for their outstanding performance in academics and other fields. I invite Dr. Padmaja Uday Kumar, Professor and Head, Department of Pharmacology, Father Muller Medical College, to list the names of the awardees. I request our guest of honor, Honorable Justice John Michael Dikuna to award the meritorious students. Respected dignitaries, honored of the days, my dear parents and students, good morning to everyone. I am happy to announce the academic prizes of the various colleges and the Father Muller Charitable Institutions who have brought glory to our institutions. Father Muller Medical College, Final MBBS, Part 2 Examinations held in March 2021. Reverend Dr. Lawrence C. De Souza Prize for overall highest marks. Late Srimati and Sri Ramana Alva Prize, sponsored by Dr. J.P. Alva in memory of his parents for highest marks in medicine. Professor S. Raghunath Shetty Prize for highest marks in surgery, including orthopedics. Professor Bharti V. Baliga Prize for highest marks in obstetrics and gynecology all go to Dr. Mayuri G. Bhatt. Professor B. Sanjeev Rai Prize for highest marks in pediatrics goes to Dr. Sneha Sylvia Chetri. Best Dissertation Award for the Medical Postgraduate instituted by Dr. B. Sanjeev Rai for the year 2021 is awarded to Dr. Sarah Sajib Moses. 
she has also secured second rank in md microbiology university examinations silver medal for the best outgoing postgraduate student in the department of general medicine sponsored by dr venkatesh bm in memory of his parents late patel m manjappa bt gowda and late shrimati chinnamma for batch 2017 goes to dr sarayu gunjal gh and batch 2018 to dr bernadette mr pass physiotherapy department late father lawrence vm fernandez memorial prize for securing highest marks overall in bpt and father ignatius de souza award for securing highest marks in physiotherapy subjects is awarded to miss jonica johnny highest marks secured in bpt university examinations held in january 2022 is awarded to the final year miss aril kamelita de souza father muller college of allied health sciences highest marks secured in final year bsc medical laboratory technology university examinations held in january 2022 is awarded to miss preeti juliana pereira highest marks secured in final year bsc medical imaging technology university examinations held in january 2022 is awarded to mr joyston franklin miranda highest marks secured in final year bsc radiotherapy technology university examination held in january 2022 is awarded to mr macklin george lewis prize sponsored by mr wilson de souza in memory of late salvador disa kalyanpur for securing highest aggregate marks in third and fourth semester mha examination held in june 21 and january 22 and highest marks in first and second semester university examination held in december 20 and january 21 goes to dr neema audrey pinto she has also secured first rank in overall university examinations and has been selected for the gold medal in the provisional list announced by the university for the 24th rghs annual convocation to be held on 20th april 2022 on her behalf her mother mrs greta pinto will be receiving the award highest marks secured in final year msc medical laboratory technology university examination held in january 2022 is awarded to miss lia maria she has also secured first rank in overall university examinations held by the university the following students have secured overall ranks in the university examinations held by rghs bangalore pg medical degree in university examinations held in 2021 md psychiatry goes to dr pankuri monga first rank first rank she has been selected for the gold medal for securing highest marks in md psychiatry in the provisional list announced by the university for the 24th rghs annual convocation dr arshi kaul second rank Dr Priyanka Renita De Souza third rank
MS OBG second rank Dr Joanna Jotsna MD radiotherapy eighth rank Dr Lanisha Jolita Sequera MD pathology Dr Archana eighth rank MD pediatrics Dr Pooja Wali MD pharmacology Dr Reshma Quadros Ronald 10th rank Dr Pooja Wali has also got the silver medal for the best outgoing postgraduate student award 2021 in the department of pediatrics sponsored by Dr Sabita Ansari in memory of late Dr SV Ansari pediatrician Kannur md pharmacology dr reshma quadros 10th rank dlo dr madhu r first rank dgo dr sanskriti jaki reddy second rank PG Allied Health Courses Master in Hospital Administration Ms Lovina Daniel Adina second rank Sister Perpet Pereira third rank Sister Mini Sebastian fourth rank Ms Prashna Rai 6th rank Father Shijo Augustin 7th rank and Ms Sahana Vega 10th rank MLT Ms Amalu Xavier 2nd rank Ms Anju Joy 3rd rank Ms Anju M 3rd rank Ms Geeta Nepal 3rd rank Mr Adarsh Benny 4th rank Ms Ms Jeshma Krasta K 4th rank Sister Lini TL 4th rank UG allied courses BSc MIT Ms Melisha Roshel De Souza first rank Mr Sunil sixth rank and Ms Lavina De Souza sixth rank BSc MLT Ms Pushpa Kumari third rank BSc RT Ms Haya Shoaib sixth rank Father Muller College of Speech and Hearing highest marks secured in 5th and 6th semester bachelor of audiology and speech language pathology university examination held in september october 2020 and august 2021 is awarded to miss kesia elsa vogis miss Father Muller School of Nursing Board Examination held by Karnataka State Diploma in Nursing Examination Board Bangalore highest marks in community health nursing 
second prize founded by late Lawrence Fernandez and highest aggregate in third year GNM prize founded by Father L.S. Pais uh, awarded to Miss Sonia Sequera. Highest marks in midwifery prize founded by late Sister Maria Teresa Fernandez and highest aggregate prize founded by Sister Apolline Moniz. Provincial of Sisters of Charity awarded to Miss Rodriguez Flavia Lancy. Father Muller College of Nursing prizes sponsored by Alumni Association. First in the class and fourth year BSc Nursing, primary investigator of the best UG research project, Ms. Rihanna Lizel de Souza. First in the class in second year post, post B, basic BSc Nursing is awarded to Ms. Princey MD. First Highest marks in community health nursing, second prize founded by late Lawrence Fernandez and highest aggregate in third year GNM prize founded by Father L.S. Paz awarded to Miss Sonia Sequera. Highest marks in midwifery prize founded by late Sister Maria Teresa Fernandez and highest aggregate prize founded by Sister Apolline Moniz, Provincial of Sisters of Charity, awarded to Ms. Rodriguez Flavia Lancy. Father Muller College of Nursing, prizes sponsored by the Alumni Association, first in the class in fourth year B.Sc. Nursing and the primary investigator of the best UG research project is awarded to Ms. Rihanna Lysel de Souza. First in the class in second year post B.Sc. Nursing is awarded to Ms. Princey M.D. First in the class in second year MSc Nursing, best dissertation in MSc Nursing and highest aggregate in MSc Nursing, prize donated by Mother General Sisters of Charity is awarded to Miss Honey Gunmi. Highest marks in OBG Nursing in fourth year BSc Nursing and highest aggregate in BSc Nursing prize donated by Mother General Sisters of Charity is awarded to Miss Veena Melisha Fernandez. Highest marks in community health nursing in second year post BSc nursing prize donated by late Lawrence Fernandez is awarded to Miss Alfonsa Al. Highest aggregate in community health nursing in second and fourth year BSc nursing prize donated by Mrs. Leela Nair is awarded to Miss Marina Thomas. And highest aggregate in Post basic BSc nursing donated by Mother General Sisters of Charity is awarded to Miss Jasmita de Souza. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am and sirs. 
Congratulations to the winners. May you aspire to achieve loftier goals. Actions speak louder than words. Our guest of honor, Honorable Justice John Michael Dikuna, is a prime example for the same. He is a former judge, High Court of Karnataka, and we are indeed privileged to have you in our midst, sir. I request you to kindly address the gathering. Good afternoon to you all. Yes. My respects to all the esteemed dignitaries on the dais. Greetings to the young graduates and postgraduates, your parents, the esteemed faculty, and all gathered here, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor and privilege to be here participating in the celebration of the academic achievement of the young graduates and postgraduates of this renowned and prestigious institutions, Father Muller's Medical College, College of Allied Health Sciences, Department of Speech and Hearing, Father Muller's College and School of Nursing. Let me therefore at the outset extend, on behalf of all gathered here and on my own behalf, hearty congratulations and best wishes to the young medicos and the nursing graduates and postgraduates who have found themselves merited to receive medals and certificates today on successful completion of their graduation. Dear graduates, you rightfully deserve accolade for the hard work and the sleepless nights you spent during the last three to five and a half years in fulfilling your dreams. Congratulations to you. I would also like to take this opportunity to greet and express my appreciation to the proud parents and guardians of all the graduates and the postgraduates and the distinguished members of the faculty who are primarily responsible for the singular feat of their wards and students. All kudos to you, dear parents, and the faculty of Father Muller Group of Institutions. My dear young medicos and nursing graduates, today you legitimately deserve a toast on your spectacular achievement. But my predicament is, is how and uh, what I could say to the people from medical field, because as all of you know, your field is different and my field is different. I'm coming from a legal background I was a lawyer for 17 years and a judge for 19 years. I'm more familiar with criminology, penology, and victimology <laughs> rather than urology, pathology, or ophthalmology. <laughs> the only difficulty is that with this background, I should sound authentic. So therefore, what I thought is, that I would share with you something that is in common with the judges, doctors, and the nurses. I think by now, all of you might have realized that judges, doctors, and nurses repeatedly do what other, people's, other people generally seek to avoid. And you know what is it? Yes, making decisions. Judges decide issues of great importance relating to men and matters irrespective of consequences. Likewise, day in and day out, doctors also make crucial decisions, what we call medical decisions, touching the lives of people treated by you. Nurses may also find themselves in situations where sensitive decisions are made about the best way to treat the patients and to solve the healthcare problems. The decision taken by you, just like judicial decisions, may result in wonders or blunders. <laughs> the only difference is that a wrong decision or an error of judgment by a judge would take the victim six feet above the ground, whereas you, the doctors, are lucky. <laughs> the earth covers your mistakes. They are buried six feet deep. <laughs> Thank you.
but the gratifying part is that the law protects both judges and the doctors with equal vigor i think this is the point that i want to make under law nothing is an offense which is done by a judge when acting judicially in the exercise of any power which in good faith he believes to be given to him by law similar protection is given to the medical practitioners the same law declares nothing which is not intended to cause death is an offense by reason of any harm it may cause to any person for whose benefit it is done in good faith and who has given a consent to suffer the harm harm or to take the risk of that harm of course you should remember there is a thin line of difference between an error of judgment and a grave negligence you know a patient he came to the doctor uh, complaining see doctor yesterday you prescribed a medicine but i couldn't get this medicine anywhere the doctor uh, took the chit and saw oh my dear i didn't prescribe this this is not uh, the prescription i gave you you know i think i was uh, i took the new ball point pen and i was trying to get the ink flowed so therefore i just uh, scratching on the finger this one uh, paper it is not my prescription so the immediately that gentleman said is it so doctor but the first uh, chemist he told me that the medicine is out of stock <laughs> and the second uh, pharmacist or the chemist he told me that the company itself has been the manufacturing company itself is closed down and the worst the third one told me he has already placed orders and he would get it to supply to me within two days you see even a bad handwriting of a doctor resulting in the administration of wrong medicine may make him liable for compensation for the injury caused by such medication misreading of a prescription by a nurse may also amount to deficiency of service i think these are the small little things you must uh, remember but at the same time you should also know that the medical law and the health care law are always linked with the obligation of a moral nature which govern the practice of medicine therefore except in cases of guilty intentions doctors are generally charged for negligence and not for manslaughter we also have legislations for protection of medical professionals and healthcare workers and for prevention of violence against doctors but the bottom line is as long as the decisions taken by you are guided by the principles of do good and do no harm your actions and decisions even if they turn out to be error of judgment will be protected therefore you the young graduates uh, graduates and post graduates as you step out of this great great institution and embark upon the career in medicine be clear about it that you are given the power to make right decisions so that you could always preserve life and promote health and well being of all and sundry this in essence is the principle underlying the hippocratic oath that you have taken today to treat the sick to the best of your ability preserve the privacy of the patient and teach the secrets of the medicine to the next generation in good faith with the sole object to do good and to do no harm at any cost let this oath be inscribed in your conscience and then there will be no occasion for any error of judgment or any instance of negligence in your conduct another equally important aspect every outgoing student of medicine and nursing should keep themselves reminding is that medicine and nursing is perceived as a profession for altruists it is a service oriented profession it is a mission the aim and object of medical edu education is not to produce specialists to help them build nursing homes clinics and diagnostic center only with a view to make money the aim and purpose of establishing medical or nursing colleges is to produce competent doctors and nurses who could render dedicated and committed service with courage and compassion it is not a happy situation to see more and more hospitals with less and less care no doubt the medical science is evolving and state of the art facilities are in work yet access to healthcare is still denied to large sections of the society 
mainly because of the prohibitive cost of treatment, exploitation of the situation by health agencies, influence of pharmaceutical industries over doctors, hospitals and universities at every level, commercialization of the academia or the corporate interests. Speaking about the mood of the nation, a writer or a journalist was quipping rather pejoratively saying that we now live in a nation where banks destroy economy, religions destroy morals, the press destroys information, universities destroy knowledge, lawyers destroy justice, and doctors destroy health. I do not know how far this is true, but it is in this scenario when the public trust in the healthcare system is being eroded, the society looks up to you, the young medicos and the nursing graduates, with the fond hope that you would redeem the system and arrest its downslide. We know that study and practice of medicine is not easy. If it were so, everyone would be doctor or a nurse. But you have proved yourself worthy of the calling. The profession you have chosen commands highest respect in the society because every day you touch a life or a life will touch yours. You should know that your reputation as a doctor or a nurse is determined by your professional attitude towards the patient. The total commitment and the theoretical knowledge and the practical skills possessed by you. There is always the need for good and responsive doctors and nurses. We only wish that the knowledge and experience you gained in this illustrious college and the moral and ethical values inculcated in you may be your guide and that it may bring a good name to your alma mater, Father Muller's Medical College and the faculty associated with these institutions. We wish and pray that you be always loved and respected and blessed with the power of healing and caring. I wish all the success in your career, your devotion and care may bring healing comfort and hope to everyone you touch. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Dear graduates, your hard work and discipline will finally be rewarded. I invite Reverend Father Ajit B. Menezes, administrator, to announce the names of the best outgoing students and the recipient of the President's Gold Medal to acknowledge their accomplishment. I request Most Reverend Dr. Peter Paul Saldana, Bishop of Manglo Diocese, to honor the awardees. Today, I feel very privileged and honored to stand here and acknowledge the achievements of our outstanding students who have made both college and their parents proud. After following the criteria laid by the institutions and scrutinizing the students' performance, and their all-round contribution, here we are proudly presenting Best Outgoing Students. Best Outgoing Allied Health Sciences graduate of the college, Mr. Macklin George Lewis. Congratulations. Jonica Johnny. Best outgoing audiology and speech language pathology graduate of the college. Ms. Kezia Elisha Varghese. Let's give
give her the round of applause as she is receiving this, the prestigious, best outgoing, outgoing graduate of speech language pathology. This is Mary Dessa Platinum Jubilee Memorial Prize donated by her son, Reverend Father Denise Dessa for overall excellence in BSc Nursing goes to Veena Melisha Fernandez. Let's give a round of applause as she received the great honor of Best Outgoing Student of College of Nursing. Best Outgoing School of Nursing Student Prize founded by Mother General Sisters of Charity awarded to Viola Thomas Fernandez. Congratulations, Viola. Now, most prestigious award of the day, Padamulla Charitable Institution President's Gold Medal for the best outgoing MBBS graduate for the year 2021 awarded to Dr. Mayuri Butt. Presenting here to you, Dr. Mayuri, for your outstanding performance. With round of applause as she received this prestigious honor from the presidents of today's program, as well as president of Padamulla Charitable Institution. I request all the best outgoing students come in here for a photography, and I request all the dignitaries on the days to join us. Congratulations to the winners. You have indeed made yourselves, your parents, and the institution proud. May you continue to excel and be inspired to achieve many more accolades along your professional journey. We are privileged to have Dr. Geeta Anjali as our chief guest. Thank you, madam, for accepting our invitation and gracing us with your presence today. We request you to accept this felicitation on behalf of Father Muller Charitable Institutions. I request most Reverend Dr. Peter Paul Saldana, Bishop of Mangalore, to felicitate our chief guest. Thank you, Your Excellency. We are also honored to have Honorable Justice John Michael Dikuna as our guest of honor. We are proud to have you with us on this solemn occasion, sir. I request you to kindly accept our felicitation and I request Most Reverend Dr. Peter Paul Saldana to felicitate our guest of honor.
now invite the president of Father Muller Charitable Institutions and the Bishop of Mangalore Diocese, Most Reverend Dr. Peter Paul Saldana, to deliver the presidential address. Dear Father Director Richard Aloysius Quello, the chief guest of the day, Dr. Gitanjali, the guest of honor, Honorable Justice John Michael Dikuna, the administrators, assistant administrators, chaplains, deans, the faculty, doctors, nurses, auxiliary staff, and especially the graduates and postgraduates, parents, well wishers, guests, and the media personnel. It's a wonderful occasion to be here. A very joyful moment for all of us. I heartily congratulate all the graduates and postgraduates, the award winners, the rank holders, and everybody who are the stars of the day that has made our institution proud. I thank the chief guest and the guest of honor for their presence and all the august dignitaries on the days and of the days. I was just thinking what message I could give on this day. And one word that struck me again and again ringing in my mind was that word empathy, empathy. So I was just trying to read about it, though it's a very common word. And incidentally, we heard that word during the Holy Mass this morning when someone prayed for that during the prayers of intercession. To substantiate it, I quote a one, a kind of a general survey done among the doctors, the general pack practitioners by the American Medical Association some years ago. So the question was asked, what percentage of people that you see in a week have needs that are qualified to treat with your medical skills? I repeat the question, what percentage of people that you see in a week have needs that you are qualified to treat with your medical skills? The answers to that questions were amazing. That question were amazing. The doctors responded that they felt qualified to treat only about 10% of their patients. That means 90% of their diseases they are unable to deal because the people suffered from real pain, yet medicine or medical doctors were not qualified to treat them because their problem was not chemical or a physical one. It was psychological and many times also spiritual. It was a life problem that defied normal medical treatment. Today, therefore, my dear graduates and postgraduates, don't think I'm a pessimist, but what you have achieved is only 10% of the knowledge of the human being because human being, being a mystery and not a problem, escapes our measuring rods, all the measuring criteria. Every human being is such a mystery that you cannot really grapple with it. So that's for we use the word again and again, dignity, respect in the oaths that you uttered. The real causes of the illnesses could be anger, pent up hostilities, negative feelings, and negative attitudes. For these, we don't have medication. Perhaps some counseling may help. No psychiatry can treat sometimes these diseases that are there within us. Once one author wrote, our feelings about ourselves and others and the quality of our relationships may have more to do with how often we get sick than our genes, chemistry, diet or environment. 
and doctors also are quick to admit that there is little in their medical training to equip them to help patients with these life's problems. And that is the main thing today because people hold a grudge and they complain some psychosomatic disease. They refuse to forgive and they have some other symptoms. They seek revenge and they hurt themselves and others. It is said in a dramatic way, the sword that we use to hurt our enemy must first pass through our own body. People with strained relationships suffer real pain and we do not have really the needed expertise to handle them and heal them. How do you do it? How do you approach these people? They may have a one presenting problem, one real problem. They come up with certain symptoms. How did you deal with the people with the COVID-19 symptoms when we did not have medication for the disease? Doctors used a lot of life skills when medication was not available. They treated the patients on symptoms. They gave them some paracetamols, some vitamins, some antibiotics. But more than that, I feel in our hospital at least, attention was given. Care and love, compassion, physical presence, when others were not allowed to come closer. Risking their own life, they could be in the ICU or MICU together with the patient, giving emotional assurance, empathy, encourage the patient to be bold and courageous, to fight against the sickness, injecting in them a dose of hope or two doses of hope of getting better, constant reassurance and empathetic listening and kindness did a lot of good job and uh, we were all witnesses in our own hospital. Many went back home safe with a smile. When our knowledge and our science fails, we still have more resources, God-given resources, I would say, within us. One fundamental, therefore, I repeat again, is empathy is much different from sympathy. Sympathy, you feel with the other, the other person cries, you also cry. The other feels uh, abandoned, you feel some kind of emotions, but unable to help. Empathy is where you are firmly grounded. You understand the person and the feelings, but also try to lift that person above from that real painful situation. Empathy is the ability to emotionally understand what other people feel, see their things from their point of view, and imagine yourself in their place. Essentially, it is putting yourself in someone else's position and feeling what they are feeling or wearing their shirt or their gown, their dress to feel how it fits or how it hurts sometimes. How to cultivate empathy? Work on listening to people without interrupting. Allow them to speak. Sometimes it may take more, than, more time than you really imagine. Pay attention to the body language and other type of non-verbal communication. Try to understand people even when they don't agree with you. Ask people questions to learn more about them and their backgrounds, their lives, their family situation. And these few questions do help us to get into their heart and their mind. And that way, that will help us also to prescribe the medicine. And many times when medicines don't work, we really put in hope in the person as the spiritual reality. And that spiritual force that each one of us has comes to our help. Human beings are certainly capable of selfish and even cruel behavior. 
you can see this every day in the newspapers a quick scan of the daily newspapers these days reveals that how people are very unkind the war between russia and ukraine where the people are simply battered and destroyed how human beings are selfish and commit heinous crimes and even in our own land hatred is propagated and rewarded whereas goodness is somehow suppressed the question is then why don't we all engage in such life serving behavior all the time what is it that causes us to feel another's pain and respond it with kindness or what is it it is impeding us doing that so we need to listen to the people with a great listening ear and a generous heart once a woman told me and this is a real thing that when a surgeon visited her before the surgery she asked him whether he can give her guarantee that she should be okay after the surgery the word guarantee triggered some kind of irritation in the surgeon and he used some very harsh words to the lady because the doctor was so angry and the uttered words were so painful even when i heard after their her, her reporting me they were really uh, they remained part of me in my mind i shouldn't use that language i don't want to utter them today and the lady did not give the consent to the doctor so someone else had to operate on her i do not want to uh, i said again not to be a pessimist but every bit of our gaze every bit of our smile our facial expression our verbal and non verbal communication has a healing effect if it is done with good will goodness i believe the doctors have a wonderful power great power nurses have great power and that power is not merely of chemicals the medicine or injections but something more that you touch with your hand the healing touch that god's power to heal comes through you and you become god's instrument after having heard a doctor and after having heard a judge as a priest what i could say i could only say on those spiritual issues like use your spiritual power as well because people who come with pain and if you respond with lot of empathy they will feel at home and they will go back healed let your life be noble be noble i would say use this key word noble in your approach to people and uh, your nobility of character will also be communicated to the patient and the patient right in front of you will feel happy for having listened to and having had the opportunity to ventilate the feelings the fears and turmoil within and these things somehow will alleviate alleviate the suffering of the person even if sometimes the illness is terminal and the medical science does not have any more remedies yet as a person with a wonderful empathetic heart and a listening ear you can do much more than what you have studied here so use your god given capacities also combine them together with your knowledge so this is therefore an opportunity during this moment also to go from 10% to 20 30 you have a long way to go on the things which are very precious we write with bold letters in red handle with care i believe god has written handle with care on each one of us in bold red letters only thing is this is invisible and 
looking at the person we understand how delicate and brittle the person is so we have to read those words when each and every patients come to us handle with care with empathy and you will do the wonders in every person's life may heal and comfort be your goal right through all the days of your life god bless you god bless you god bless you thank you thank you your excellency for that inspiring speech all good things must come to an end bearing this in mind i call upon reverend father ajit b menezes our administrator to propose a vote of thanks your lordship most reverend dr peter paul saldana dignitaries on and off the days dear graduates ladies and gentlemen cordial greetings to all of you being the convener of the graduation committee it gives me a great honor and immense delight to express my sentiments of gratitude to all those gathered here for most i thank god almighty for his enduring and infinite blessings upon this prestigious institution especially for this day of celebration padamula institution today is not only a brand that is globally recognized but a hallmark of achievements holistic growth and success stories an institute that soars high with a legacy that needs to be continued forward all praise to god at the outset i ex express my heart my gratitude to most reverend dr peter paul saldana the bishop of mangalore diocese the president of father mula charitable institution and the president of today's solemn occasion if today father mula is at the pinnacle of progress and meeting new horizons it is because we are under the leadership of such a visionary whose one motive is to make a difference in the lives of everyone who seek comfort through our services like an added feather to the cap he is a constant motivator an inspiration a person who is humble and epitome of unfailing support dear bishop we thank you immensely for every small and big thing you do for us especially for gracing this occasion with your presence your meaningful message has definitely touched each and every one thank you dear bishop I am pleased to acknowledge and appreciate the presence of our chief guest Dr Geetanjali Pro Vice Chancellor Geetam University of Medical Sciences Vizak and a former director of AIMS Bhuvaneshwar a perfect amalgamation of experience knowledge and hard work we are grateful to you doctor for accepting our invitation and being present here you are definitely the apt icon for our graduates and i am sure your message has motivated all the graduates to be a good professionals better and humane individuals too we are very thankful to you doctor <laughs> justice is truth in action today we have honorable justice john michael dikuna former judge high court karnataka sir you are a true inspiration to walk the path of honesty a virtue that medical professionals must imbibe and practice in their profession thank you sir for willingly agreeing to be a part of this jubilation we are profoundly grateful to you a pastor whose novel ideas consistent efforts and positive energy act like a catalyst for the growth of this healthcare institution is our own very own beloved director reverend father richard coello his guidance and diligent leadership steer this institution in the right direction his untiring earnestness is highly acknowledged thank you dear father <laughs> on this solemn occasion i thank and appreciate the presence of all the reverend fathers sisters members of the governing Bo board and centenary society benefactors the government officials and our alumni for being a part of this auspicious celebration your companionship is of much support for all of us i also wish to extend my sincere thanks to all the administrators reverend father rudolf desa for the nelson pais for the jeevan sikwera 
for heading different committees and for their inputs in making this event a great success with lasting memories. I also express my gratitude to our spiritual directors, for the Felix Montero, for the George de Souza, for the Ronald Lobo, for the John Vaz, for all their dedicated services round the clock to everyone in the campus. Thanks to Father Roshan Krasta, Administrator, and Father Rohan Dias, Assistant Administrator of Father Muller Homeopathy Medical College and Hospital, and Father Sylvester Vincent Lobo, Administrator of Father Muller Hospital Tumbe, for being with us in everything we do in this campus. I'm sure today's occasion is an ideal example of our teamwork, commitment, dedication, and unity of priesthood. Thank you, dear fathers. It takes a team effort for grooming professionals in the healthcare system. I place on record our indebtedness to the deans, vice deans, principals, vice principals, chief of research, medical superintendents, chief nursing officer, YHODs, course coordinators, the teaching staff, YHR manager, liaison officer, and the staff of our institutions. With all the struggles that have come your way, you have still managed to be an anchor to the ship. Your laborious services have bloomed this college and our campus academically and professionally. Sincere thanks to all of you, dear sirs and madams. The unsung heroes, the parents of our graduates, whose million sacrifices and vital role have played a major role in their education. Today, they have witnessed their daughters and sons graduating with a sense of satisfaction and pride. Thank you, dear parents and guardians, for being collaborators in our journey. Let's give a round of applause to all the parents and the guardians those are present here. An event like this needs to have a blueprint, and the planning needs to commence weeks before. For this event, we were backed up by a hardworking team whose dedicated efforts, observation of bird's eye, and the zeal to work without expecting anything in return have led to the success of this event. Thank you for your kind support. Thanks to all the committee coordinators and members for your kind service. Let's give the round of applauses to all the committee members once again. We are thankful to our media friends, print and electronic, police personnel, and all those who have assisted in the technical, physical, and security arrangements, sound and light, video and photography, stage setting, backdrop, divine world for the live telecast of our entire program. I also thank our college nursing band, Vijay Oliveira as being his band master, band leaders, and team. Your assistance has brought glow and radiance. Thank you very much for all your kind assistance. I place and record and appreciate all our students, all the volunteers, their coordinators, compere of the programs, staff and student coordinators, secretaries, and the office staff of our institutions who are assisting us on and off the stage. I also wish to express my gratitude to the heads and the members of various committees who assisted in organizing today's program responsibly and professionally. Thank you very much. And to you, my dear graduates, this is your day. My heartiest congratulations and warmest felicitation to you all. You are the superstars of the day. We have nurtured you and today, we send you out as living example of mercy and compassion towards the sick and the suffering. With our motto, heal and comfort, etched in your heart, and with the holistic formation given to you at Father Muller's, may you always continue to chase your dreams, live your reality, and get out of your comfort zone to face the challenges that come your way. Remember, to be dedicated, committed, and sincere in the services that you render. Let the gratefulness to your alma mater resonate through your deeds of compassion. Best wishes 
and blessings to all of you for a bright future. I request all the parents and all the guests, those who are here, let us give them the round of applauses for all our graduates. Congratulations. May God bless all of you. My humble and sincere apologies if I have forgotten to mention anyone's name. Please accept my personal gratefulness. Before I conclude, once again, I thank all of you present here. Your prayers, presence, and participations have amplified the essence of today's grand celebration and jubilation. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Reverend Father. We have now reached the end of the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, let us show our reverence to our nation by rising as we sing the national anthem. As a gesture of respect and gratitude, I request you all to remain standing as the dignitaries leave the hall.